Hello you, I'm the Commissar and we're watching Forge Alliance Forever. Today we have a 6 vs 6 custom game which is going down on the map Black Hawk Down, a map I've never played and we'll be looking at it in just a moment when we've introduced the players. So, Team 1, which is the southern team for an irritating change, here we have Leisure Domain, highest rated player in the game in dark green, he's 1600 rated and he's Cybron. A lot of mechs for him there. Round here, in yellow, we have Once Handsome, 700 rated in yellow and Cybron. Moving on around, we got Leaf, who's 1200 rated, Eon and Burgundy. Up on this plateau and going first air, we have Pashon, who is 1000 rated and orange in UEF. Down here, near the lake, we have a Robot R600, who's 1500 rated, and Cyan, he's gone mauve. And last but not least, for Team 1, we have the Desert Fox, who's in red, and he's Cybron, and he's 900 rated. That's Team 1. Let's meet Team 2, who are in the north. Here, in this sort of sealed-off area at the back, we have Average Smurf Enjoyer, 1400 rated, and Cybron in Lime Green, we're going to call him Smurf. Here in the white, we have Emperor Car France, who is Seraphim, he's 1200 rated. Down here in the front, in another first air player, we have Cladso, he's 1300 rated, he's a UEF, and he's Baby Blue. Up here on the plateau, we have Zerbit the Seventh, I think that's meant to be, we'll call him Zerbit. Um, he's 1200 rated, he's Eon, and he's blue, and la not, oh, not last actually, walking forward to the lake, let's go and get him, we have Tiberius the 27th, um, 800 rated, Seraphim in grey, and last but not least, here is Trostikiva Krovi, which I believe is Russian for bloody panties, he we're going to call him Krovi, and he is in green, and he is 1100 rated, he's playing Cybron. So, quick look at the map. Vast amounts of reclaim. Here, 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 and here. So, there's just reclaim everywhere on this map. Tens of thousands of it. And I have no doubt that's what Leaf's going to try and get his paws on here with his come forward. Same with Handsome. That also looks like a bit of con movement to the middle for Clad So. And I wouldn't be surprised if Desert Fox also made his way up there. Now, Robot and Tiberius are both sending their comms to the lake and getting down naval factories. Looks like there's at the moment to lead a bit more investment from Robot. Let's see if that pays off. And here's a drop already out from Clad So planning to put engineers down by this vast heap of rocks here. It puts them down very quickly and it flies away. They go straight for an anti-air to prevent any counter drops and then they queue up some factories. A bit of early air fighting over those scouts. Now, Leafs come here to try and defend this against engineers, but little does he know that there's a, a drop coming out from Zerbit trying to land some engineers here, and now Leaf is rooted to the spot on a gun upgrade. Definitely more naval commitment from Robot, and he's bringing his com forward to try and. Yeah, he's coming out here. Maybe he'll try and grab some of this. Those engineers get dropped, and at the moment they're just out of range of Leaf, and they put up a point defense quickly to um, guard themselves against whatever may be coming in. Robot's trying to stop any pressure on his com here with these frigates, but a frigate turns up from Tiberius, as does a submarine, and they'll probably finish that off. 
these engines are getting a lot of work done. Sure, they might be straying a bit close to Leaf, but I mean, they're, they're going to get a lot of the reclaim there. But Robot's getting his side hoovered up quite quickly. There is a point defence there that might stop him, though. Those RT and that point defence, though, plus there's... Ooh, I say there's frigates, but these frigates are being tied up by Robot's frigates. Anyway, Robot thinks better of it and is retreating towards the water. With the range upgrade, though, Leaf should have no trouble grabbing what's left of this for himself. Anything else exciting going down? More units being ferried in here. Another big bunch of engineers arrive for Cadso. He's certainly going to get to T2 faster than Desert Fox does with those engineers to assist, I think. A couple of little jesters out trying to hold back Handsome. And the Tech 2 Navy is complete for Robot, so um, that should give him... So with a Tech 2 Naval Yard and 3 Tech 1 versus at the moment only 1 Tech 1 Naval Yard, though um, Tiberius has a few more killed, I feel the Navy is definitely going to be going Robot's way. However, here we have two Ghetto Gunships out from Zerbit. Let's see where he plans to send them. Meanwhile, Carl France is bringing his comm up to assist Cladso. But he still a naked comm there, so um, might not get too much done, but we'll see. Mind you, both Handsome and Tiberius here are naked, and there's quite a lot of jesters flying around for Clovey. But these, these ghettos are where it's at. Oof, look at that. That is a mechs almost upgraded that just goes down to the ghetto which quickly lands its labs and leaves them to run around to cause havoc. This mech is also a target and again lands its labs flies off. That's got to be one mech that was almost tech tool one mech that was tech tool picked off by that so that's nice work from Zerbit. Handsome meanwhile is actually taking quite a bit of damage from these jesters. There's a couple of fighters overhead from Passion, but are they going to be enough? Hansen's into the red. Could Hansen be about to explode? Passion says sorry. He. But we've got to watch out because. Oh, Hansen, I think, is actually going to get into the lake. But over here, we've got some T2 PD wars going down between Desert Fox, Car France, and Cladso. This destroyer, however, is brutalizing Tiberius units on in the in the water, and I think Robot will definitely lay claim to the whole pond. Desert Fox easily being pushed back there and we have a drop we have a drop in here from Car France and that's gonna wreak havoc that artillery on Desert Fox's base meanwhile those little labs are still the three that remain are still just messing around in there so, and while well, Desert Fox is distracted by the arty which has taken out a lot of his mexes in pushes the tanks of Carl France and Cladso. Tiberius has brought his comfort to try and shore away the navies of Robot, but Robot's destroyer is really causing a bit of havoc back here. He's also got a cruiser out which is helping Desert Fox defend his base. That destroyer is getting a good look, at, good look of work done. 20 kills so far, 27, nearly 2800 mass killed. But what happened to Kudzo there? 
Did he just quit? And full share is not on, so Kladso's base just goes up in smoke. Oof, I wonder what happened. Did he, ha did he have to quit? How quick, uh, quickly can they re-establish control of his base up in the north? Desert Fox has been rebuilding fast, but I think it's cost him. He's only got 15 eco compared to these these players here with a huge eco as well, like 170, 190 each. But out of the other players, out of the players with essentially one eco each, Desert Fox is falling far behind. And this cruiser is causing him problems as well, so as is out from Emperor Car France. But Tiberius it feels like he might be in a bit of trouble there with a cruiser attacking him, a destroyer attacking him. Tiberius is falling back, but there's a monkey under construction up here. Is it too little too late to save Tiberius? Maybe. I wonder what all these fighters are doing from Zerbit all the way back here. Have you forgotten them? We've got T3F from Pashon. And we've also got TP from Zerbit, so that's what you might expect at this stage. Tiberius has taken a lot of damage, but I think he's going to get out of here. Though look at all the mexes he's losing. Mind you, something's been happening to Trossach's me mexes, um, Crovies, and I haven't seen what that might be. Lots to keep an eye on. Watch this drop though, two tech free engineers from Smurf. They start off with a classic autogun point defence, quickly reclaiming the engineers that come to try to stop them. Splitting up to avoid the bombers, more autoguns on the way. These cruisers are now in quite large numbers and might be going to cause problems for the naval yards of Robot who has put up some TMDs but maybe that won't be enough. Here's Cyber and so I guess he could go a bit naughty naughty walkie walkie over there with his destroyers if he wanted to but maybe he's more concerned with trashing poor Tiberius's base whose main mechs have been blown apart. These engineers have been ki killed, but Desert Fox is just standing in point defense fire. Does he know that? I don't think Desert Fox knows that. Or maybe he's just thi thinking he can confidently take that. There's that monkey up for Smurf. Desert Fox, are you, are you just going to... 40 hit points. He had 40 hit points left. That was either brave or crazy and I'm not sure which. Over here the cruiser spam is increasing and there are now those naughty naughty floaty floaty zooies coming across to cause trouble for robots navy. Leaf, meanwhile, has been expanding to try and take advantage. And boom, we that was a, um, what's it called? Corsair. Corsairs just take out Desert Fox, who didn't have enough time to repair his hit points. And so we're now 5 versus 5. And all of Desert Fox's stuff goes up in smoke. And immediately... Smurf is ready to come and do something about it. He's, he's dropping some engineers to build on that base. Meanwhile, here comes his monkey walking forward. But look at Ledger Domain's 400 eco here. That's, that's mad. He's building out quite the air force here, but we haven't yet seen it deployed. Meanwhile, Tiberius is trying to take back his um, his pond with a heap of yet more zooies, but he still hasn't taken back his mechs, and that's going to hurt. 
Meanwhile, Smurf has opportunistically grabbed many of the Metses that once belonged to Cladso. This monkey feels like it's going to be a problem for Robot. What does he have that can stop a monkey? Nothing really. He's putting up some point defences at Tech 1 and Tech 2. He knows it's there. And there's a strat here clearing the way for him, for that monkey from Zerbit. The strat gets shot down, but it takes out a couple of mexes. Robot's safe from the monkey at the moment. He's under the water. But his poor base, which has a lot of T3 mexes in there, is absolutely not safe, and the monkey just walks over it. We've also got a bit of pressure here, but it feels like uh, Clovey has enough to hold that back. Yeah, the monkey just crushes robot space, and his naval HQ is also under pressure, both from cruisers and zooies fired down by Car France. So, look, and look at the number of factories that those engineers have been throwing up for Smurf. Let's see what he does with them. That monkey pushes its way on down. Lots and lots of hive bird power going up for Ledger Domain, but will it be enough for him to stop? Did Robot just give in? I can see why he would, but... Feels a bit rude and Leaf is not happy either because his base is also the victim of this monkey. So that's two players utterly smashed by Smurf, a third one having his base destroyed and I can't help but feel that Handsome is going to be going the same way in a minute. Lots of point defence going up here to defend against the Zooies coming in. Zerbit's dropped some stuff around here to help out in Clovey's base. And gestures are tickling this five-starred monkey lord, which is literally regening faster than it can hurt them. As it just smashes its way into Handsome's base. But, thanks to Ledger Domain's epic eco, they're not even 100 miles ahead, the, the, the northern team. They've smashed four bases, and they're not even 100 miles ahead. Doesn't feel possible, but it is. In fact, they're almost evens on mass, despite that. And this monkey is five stars and on full health, and what have they got to stop it? A big firebase, sure, but... Leaf, like a sensible fellow, is looking to get into the water with that monkey coming for him. Handsome is just standing out and daring anything to come his way, which, while courageous, may not be wise. Lots of engineers coming out of there must be. Look, look at all that reclaim that we have right there that Smurf can just hoover up. Reclaim collected is now actually only 10,000 ish in favour of the northern team. You'd have thought it'd be more. And total mass is actually in favour of the southern team by 100,000, 100, which is crazy. That monkey walks past Leaf in the water, pops out. Feels like Handsome, despite his lucky escape earlier, is n now a bit less lucky. The monkey sees him, the monkey fires on him, and down he goes. Now there's three players in the southern team. One of them on this plateau, one of them in this enclave, and one of them, all he has left is this mechs in a pond. And a bit of energy storage.
a lot of energy storage, but you know. This clown ripped through our whole noob squad, says Handsome. Now I happen to know that Handsome isn't a noob, but saying noob squad seems a bit rich when you're 700 rated. I mean, he's played a lot, but even so. Now that monkey has taken a bit of damage from that, so it's retreating a little bit. Let's see what it's going to do. All these factories have stopped work here for now. Maybe Smurf feels that's enough in the way of T1 assault bots. And Leaf, with his double gun and shield, backs away. Well, this is interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten transports, ten T2 transports. I fear that there's some sort of attack up here being planned by Smurf. This string of Zooey's seems a bit poor, it's just trickling in, and if it weren't for this sort from his friends, it would just be easily dying. Even as it stands, Leaf is probably going to stop them. He's got a couple of sniper bots from somewhere. Presumably he built them and removed them back before dying. And there's an awful lot of point defense here. I think that Leaf can hold against this lot, but if that monkey comes back, he may have a bit more trouble. Quick check in on the Ecos. And the Northern team now does have the significant Eco advantage. Team 2 up here on 1.7k to 700 from Team 1. A lot of shields going up and Leaf setting up inside his friend's little enclave here. And here come the transports, dropping wave after wave of Mantis onto the plateau. Many are shot down by the T3 fighters, but many Mantis land. But look at this, they're all just being popped. Not the greatest drop there from Smurf but he's got more planned. Meanwhile, let's see how this is going down here. Those Zooey's are trying to trickle in, but they've got a choke point to get through, and they're, they're, they're making a good job of it, but I don't think they're actually getting through it. Clovey dropping units across to tech get these expansions here. And the monkey laser going down and stealth for Leisure Domain. And cloaking, well, and look how fast that's going up, that's crazy. Now, the monkey laser still does 4,000 damage in this game. This game was before the most recent balance patch, so... But even if it weren't, that would still be quite a hefty amount of damage ready to come out. And bringing him to the front would be quite significant damage. But now there's a T2 naval yard here and the cruiser firing manages just to get over this very high cliff wall into the base. Monkey going down here and that's going down pretty fast too. This monkey's nearly wrapped up to full health with its five stars of vet and cyber regen, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it push in when they see this monkey coming. Leaf, very boldly still out there fighting against the inbound trickle of Zoe's. And there's that monkey up. But that's a lot of three factories now four of them including the HQ very far forward and they're producing bounces to protect from the air so it's obviously what can 
Pasha and Dula isn't from the air, and maybe they know about this vast air force that Ledger Domain has. But, here comes that monkey pushing out. So I think it's just time to have a brief look at map control here. This, this here and this here, these, this plateau and this enclave is all that the southern team have. Commander Everything under else is in the sight of the northern team and speaking of, commands are under attack here for Leaf, who's still out fighting boldly and we've got another monkey already up from Leisure Domain who's pushing out with his first. He's just ignored these cruisers and is going straight for the naval yard. And all of these factories are now up to T2 and on their way to T3, so we could be seeing some huge ground production here. Taking out all the engineers first, and with the naval yard quickly following. Leaf still boldly out on the front line as this second monkey comes to pick up those cruisers, and this tactical missile fire will soon ease up. Now, they've been on the offensive a lot, but have the also dominant northern team, who are presently still three times the eco of the southern team, have they got anything to stop this monkey? This monkey might. Ledger's Domain will have to be very careful with his positioning. Two monkeys beat one monkey, even if the one monkey has five stars. And that's only T1, that'll just serve to feed these monkeys vet. This one's already got one star. Looking up on these plateaus, big air grid. And, and big force of transports here too, we're going to be seeing drops everywhere. Nothing game ending here, just more spam trickle. And it looks like all the production for Smurf is focused down here. Very defensive, just throwing up ASFs mainly and turrets for Passion. But here's the monkey fight about to go down. The monkeys engage each other. One of their domains explodes, but another one walks in just in time, and now we're two monkeys to none. And the monkey spam from the domain just isn't stopping. And what's this? Is that what I think it is? Yes, it is. My dear viewers, when was the last time you saw this? We have fire beaters, hordes, and hordes, and hordes of fire beaters. Now, I think it's a bit of a time for a split screen, because on the one hand, over here, we have two monkeys walking into a base, but on the other hand, those fire beaters with their cloaks are dropping in, and they're just be they're being popped, but is there enough turrets to stop the sheer number of fire beaters? I don't think there are. This monkey is picked off before it goes up. And these fire beaters just scutter in. Broadswords take off to clean up clean up the fire beaters, but look at this production, there's just more and more and more. The 
The broadswords are stopping them, but how long can that continue? Meanwhile, this monkey clears up around here, while this one fights its way around there, and we've got a third on its way out. Firebeater is now getting into the mixes of Passion. He's lost one so far. They pinpoint his comm. And this horde of Firebeaters rushes in. Now Ravagers have a nice amount of damage, but they reload quite slowly after firing that burst of shots. And look at all those mechs just going down. The comm runs away. As do power plants and air factories and still more fire beetles are landing. It seems they're easing off for a moment and we'll go back to single screen. Um, Carl France has put up an experimental bomber so just in time for us to see that. But don't think that's the last of the fire beetles. There's more. But wait. There's more. And an experimental flying fortress up from Zervit. But we ought to have a look at those air forces. That can't be right. Oh, because I'm looking at Passion. He only has three. But Ledger Domain has 257 ASFs compared to only 41 from Zervit. So, I think Zervit might be actually a bit out of his depth with, it, with this Tsar. He flies in over the monkeys, but his air is just swept aside by this wave of ASF from Leisure Domain who just takes out the Tsar in a single pass. Meanwhile, down here, Pashon is finally cornered. And the arse washer is what finishes him off. So now we have only Leisure Domain and Leaf trapped in their one tiny corner, with the exception of five monkey lords which are wandering the map. This chicken, 65 out of 67,000 hit points done, that's 97%, it's so close, and yet not a chance. Those monkeys just walk over it. This Zooey trickle is still going on and there's just one monkey sitting there. Fire beetles come flying in. Were they st An awful lot of fire beetles. An awful lot. But Leisure Domain's Air Force picks off all but eight and the monkey's fire deals with the rest easily enough. Another XP from Carl France, this one is a chicken. This anti-air, that's a lot of anti-air and Leisure Domain is rightly worried but he's got a monkey to stop that so as long as he stays away from it. but. Rock in a hard place. There's a line of Sam's here. Where can he go with it? With his with his air force. The quad monkey task force pushes its way towards Car France. You can see that bomber just ready to make a pass on them, and the chicken planning, presumably, to clear up the wreck. The bombers gets its bomb off and smacks quite a bit of damage off the monkey, but these monkeys are all five starred now, so feels to me like one pass from this bomber isn't enough, and they might just do the dirty. Another chicken is half done, but The chicken's dead and they haven't killed a single monkey. That one's probably going down to the Ion Storm, but even so. Yet more fire beaters drop in. Meanwhile, quick check back here. There's now three monkeys defending there and they've cleaned up all the air. 
fire beetles drop in and rush towards the monkey. And that's a lot of damage on that monkey. Combined with the arse washer. And the iron storm. Watching those fire beetles scuttling up behind the monkey and boom. Just 3,000 hit points left, yet more fire beetles fall in. Clovey, who'd run all the way over here, is finally taken out by the monkeys. But only two remain, and one of them is on very low health. And a lot, a lot of fire beetles rush in behind them. The monkey's razor opens fire and it cleans them up before they get to actually strike their target. Those fire beetles are not getting anything done and still there are more. Have you ever seen so many fire beetles? Four monkeys now pushing down here. And what used to be a vast economy for Team 2, I keep wanting to say Team 1 for the Northern team, and they're not. Quick fire beetle drop, not successful there as the transport is shot down, and the next one is probably just going to get lasered apart, and it is. But not to be deterred, yet more fire beetles. Take out a monkey, take out two monkeys. Two monkey lords destroyed right there by fire beetles. A sentence I never thought I was going to say. And there are more. These three monkeys have wandered all the way down here. Another wave is cut off by the, the vast air forces of Leisure Domain. Don't know where he's trying to go with them, they're just dying in droves to this air force. And this monkey comes forward and starts picking them off. I'm assuming he's got them all on radar, I'm assuming he's just got Omni and can, yeah, he can just see all the radar signatures even though he can't see them in real life, as it were. And Zervit starts work on a nuke. He's already got a Tsar up here. I can't help but feel that there must, must be anti nukes somewhere in this base. There's a disruptor going up, but are there anti nukes? Um, if there are, I'm looking right through. There it is. And it's well loaded, so that nuke is probably not going to get much done. Here, though. Look at that. Look at that trickle of beaters. Glowing blue and running in. There's my thumbnail right there. I'll tell you a secret, I went and counted these beaters by, um, every now and then by double clicking on them when I was plus telling through it earlier. The most beetles you see on screen at once is 350. 350 fire beetles. Let that number sink in for a moment. Six monkeys now trying to deal with those hundreds upon hundreds of beetles. Most of those, I think, are going to drop to the monkeys' air to ground to air missiles. But several do manage to land, and they explode. They do quite significant damage to one of the monkeys, but all in all, I don't think that was very successful. Tiberius has actually managed to re-establish up here after these two monkeys were taken out. 
But here, the Ledger Domain has expanded into Crovey's old base. And the Fire Beetles... The Fire Beetles continue. Where once there were hundreds of Fire Beetles, now there are still hundreds of Fire Beetles. And a Soul Rip is coming out. Now, if I'd asked you... 20 minutes ago to predict who would win this game you'd have, you'd have thought it was a trick question and though, but with that huge advantage that Team 1 had you'd, you'd surely have thought for them are you so sure now? these six monkeys are just crushing and sure that there's still three corners to only one let's have a look at the ecos we're now at Northern team 1.4k, Southern team 800, so it's still about 1.8 to 1 lead. If that was wrong, don't correct me, I'm a mathematician, it's my job not to know this. And the fire beater factories all go up, the transports with the last remaining loads of fire beaters drop in. Little luck is had against these monkey lords, and sad though it may be, Smurf might have to come up with a different tactic, and his different tactic is he's got that teleporter and monkey laser. What's he going to do with that? Is he going to... I mean, I'd prefer the cloak and monkey laser, because then you could just walk up to the monkeys and smack them. Zar coming to his defence from... from Zerbit. Clovey not happy with how the situation's going, thinking it was in the bag. And now thinking it absolutely isn't. But this Tsar... How many monkeys could it take out for... I was going to say for Legend of Air Force comes and get it, but with that bank of sands... Might not be such an easy ask. Down it goes, but it did take two of the monkeys with it. Zerbit tries to engage over the Sams, but he's not close enough and he's just going to get wiped. He's got a salvation started, but he's not. But, um, will that get him anywhere? His nuke isn't loaded. He must. The, 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 he, he must know they've got anti nukes in there. Well, now he does, even if he didn't before. He can see the anti-nuke right there. If I were Ledger Domain, I would 100% have a second now, just to stop them be getting sniped. This T3 naval yard, though, I think I saw a leaf saying something about nuke subs, Now I would be surprised if that were not his plan with that. Not sure what these entries are being dropped here for. Oh, they're being dropped to the lines of sands in the water where monkeys can't easily shoot them. I say you can't easily shoot them, but monkeys have good range. I think that's not going to pay off. And Zervit trying to put up an RT in a nice safe position in Smurf's base. So Rip not up to much. I feel it could achieve a bit more. I think I feel that with this sort, he can probably go and just take out quite a lot there with the Soul Rip, but I understand that that will give him pause for thought. Meanwhile, the attack the attack force is replenished up to five monkeys and it's pushing in on Carl France's position, which is now as much Tiberius's position as Carl France. Crovey getting quite salty towards Smurf. And Smurf teleports in to try and take out Leisure Domain, but Leisure Domain had the laser, had the cloak. He didn't achieve anything, and because it's not full share, look at all that going up. Meanwhile, the monkeys kill Tiberius, and suddenly. Suddenly, what can Team 2, the Northern Team, what can they do? Carl France can't believe it.
at the two teams were on even eco. A little bit of the air grid was destroyed, but that was all. The disruptors still out there and firing. And it looks like it's been firing at the anti-air so that so that the solar ripper can come in. I survived. You did. I promised you would, comrade. Ah, oh, such brotherly love. There's still quite a lot of Sams there, and there is... Oh no, that's only a Miasma. I just saw the artillery thing. I thought he can't be firing back. Or can he? He's actually got quite a lot of engineers just eating Smurf space. These carriers firing their tactical missiles at the at the monkeys who are wandering around on land. Not they they could probably just walk up. Can a monkey fire down at that angle? I don't think it can. May, maybe the the torpedoes aren't great though. Maybe a mega would be a good bet for um, Ledger Domain to walk in there. So if it just went down. And artillery bombards the Sams up here. But the salvation's up. Rapid fire arty raining down on Cybran Shields. I don't see those Cybran Shields lasting that long. After one huge turnaround, could it be time for another? Could Zerbit be about to take out Leisure Domain with his salvations? The nuke launches, but the strategic missile defense is still there. If the Salvation had targeted that SMD, th this would be it for Leisure Domain. But he's still out there. I mean, and let's not forget that Leaf's still out there with 300 production from this base from Raza CUs. And with his cloak, with a damaged dragonfly, Leisure Domain gets on a transport and is flying into his enemy base. The boars. The boars. The absolute testes on that commander. He's down. The transport backs off a bit. The Silver Ripper is trying to get to the Salvation, but it too is shot down, and all their hopes rest. But while well, the Salvation continues its bombardment, wrecking Leisure Domain space, and now it's going for that nuke defense. But this is where all the action is. Suddenly, everything in Zerbit space is going up. Can he see it? He absolutely can. He knows exactly what's there. Can he see it? Yes. Can he stop it? The vast amounts of hit points caught thanks to the com with that cloaking generator are shedding away. But look at this. And the salvation has been taken down. This feels courageous. He picks him up, he flies him away. Must have been this Tecriati just bombarding it. They try and pick him off with a wave of ASFs, but the ASFs go down. The Dragonfly takes a hit or two with only 300 hit points left. It lands Regis Domain's com. Wow. Meanwhile, the monkeys have walked into. I've forgotten his name, Smurf's old base. And they're still taking tactical missiles out of it. There wasn't anything left there to kill. The artillery rains down on Zerbit's position. Car France, with a Tech 2 upgrade on him, is going for the teleporter. I don't see that getting much done, but. 
With all that down, Zerbit surrenders. And what can Carl France do? I will tell you, the answer is not much. Carl France surrenders too, and against all the odds, and against all the fire beaters, the southern team, team one, wins the game. That was absolutely the most insane game I have cast yet. I hope you enjoyed it. Was it an example of top tier quality play? Arguable. Was it an example of crazy play? Yes. Anyway, my loyal followers, you know the drill, you watched this far, so um, if you haven't already, please go down below and like, subscribe, and obey. I'm the Commissar, I'll see you next time.